In life, we all encounter obstacles, and those obstacles come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. The question is, how do we handle those obstacles? Do we attack them head on, or do we allow them to make us quit? Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves, their dreams, or their goals. We will interview successful people from all walks of life as they share their no quit stories when they had the choice to give up or give in, but they didn't. We thank you for listening, and we hope to be that jolt of positivity as you go for your greatness. Welcome to episode number 142 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is grit. Our quote of the day comes to us from John Wayne. True grit is making a decision and standing by it, doing what must be done. Today's episode is sponsored by the good people over at West Fair Communications, who publish the Westchester County Business Journal and the Fairfield County Business Journal. These newspapers do a wonderful job in covering all aspects of the business world within two of the most influential markets in the New York metropolitan area. You can also take advantage of their daily news feeds, which keep track on the companies and thought leaders in these important regions. For more information, take a look at www.westfaironline.com. Trust me, once you start reading, you won't quit. I wanted to apologize for episodes being off on their release days this week. We have been diligently working on our first ever No Quit Living live event, which will take place on August 11th in Norwalk, Connecticut. If you would like any information or to find out more about the event, please email me at chris at noquitliving.com. Once again, that's chris at noquitliving.com. As a workout fanatic, it is a complete honor to present you today's episode. Our guest happens to be Joe Driscoll, who is the CEO of Killcliff, a sports energy drink company that I am not only a customer of, but also a big fan of. Killcliff was founded by a Navy SEAL, and they have a motto of kill to quit, which I think will resonate well with the No Quit tribe. Joe shares his perspectives on many different things with us today, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Joe, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate it. So the first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to bring it today? Absolutely. Let's bring it. <laughs> I knew that would be your answer. So, th- <laughs> so the number of objective of our show is to both motivate and inspire listeners to never give up. I was curious if you had either a no quit story yourself or perhaps a challenging time that really tested you, but you kept on going and you didn't quit. Absolutely. You know, it, I, I think uh, when I reflect back, I, I sort of have moments where I'm like, wow, I've you know, been pretty fortunate in life and I've met so many people that have overcome such significant hurdles. And, and yet I realize that the challenges we face happen every day. And, and so as I reflect, the biggest challenge I would say uh, or setback that I, I incurred was in my early 20s, uh, my father was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and uh, passed about two and a half years later. And he was, you know, sort of the rock of the family, the guy who uh, I went to for advice and direction. And and uh, at that, you know, seeing him kind of struggle with that, uh, but, you know, face it with courage and know this was something that was gonna, you know, take him, right? There wasn't uh, a quit in him. He had to continue to face uh, that struggle and, and work with the family and continue to be present and participate, and he did. But what it did for me is, it really set a different course for my pursuits. It was at that moment that I was like, you know, there's no time to waste. Uh, What you want to do is get out there and not only enjoy life to the fullest, but also anything that I'd been waiting on or thinking about, it was time to go get after it. And uh, I decided to change careers and go to business school and convince my wife to quit her job and follow me in that endeavor. And, you know, it just sort of set me on a new path and and gave me a new level of appreciation for, for time. You know, it's interesting how those stories and how those challenges we encounter in life, they kind of mold our future. And I think not that everybody encounters the same obstacles or the same challenges. Some are bigger than others. But the reality is when you're faced with that adversity and you obviously lost somebody that was very close to you, and I'm, and I'm sorry for your loss, but you. but you realized how precious life was. And I think it's amazing that people sometimes in the worst times in their lives they really step up and it leads to their next success. And I think we all deal with that in different ways. So if you wouldn't mind, I wanted to ask if you would just tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, so uh, I am the CEO of Killcliff Performance Beverages. And, uh, you know, prior to this this role, I was 
uh, head of marketing and innovation at Angie's Boom Chicka Pop Popcorn. So if you're familiar with that brand. And uh, I, before that, I spent about 12 years at General Mills in, in classical marketing training, doing things like running Wheaties and Lucky Charms and all your favorite breakfast cereals. So I'm a, I'm a marketer at heart. Uh, I'm a husband and father of three kids, a bunch of teenagers in my house all the time. So um, I like to uh, stay active. I've been more active since taking this job and continuing to pursue fitness goals and objectives, but also just motivating my team in a way that's going to build this brand and continue to drive success. So that's, I guess, me in a nutshell. No, I appreciate that backstory. Before we jump into the Kill Cliff, I have to ask you, as a big fan of Wheaties when I was younger, do they really make you a champion and a better athlete? <laughs> I would say the uh, you know that that is a hundred year old brand that had such great history, and we had such a blast working on it. Where uh, getting to work with athletes, I you know I ended up working with like Peyton Manning and Albert Pujols and. Uh, Kevin Garnett, and we were developing an extension of Wheaties called Wheaties Fuel at the time, where we were trying to increase its efficacy. But what I will say, it, its original product is certainly a celebration of champion athletes. I have to tell you that, uh, full and fair disclosure, I think due to some of the athletes that were on the cover, I guilted my, my mom into buying many a boxes of Wheaties. <laughs> and not that they didn't taste good, don't get me wrong, but uh, when Michael Jordan and some of those people amazing athletes were on i definitely uh was more in tune to to convincing my mom to buy a, a box or two of wheaties no question right it worked and it, it was uh it's great i think uh, there are a lot of addicts with some uh, boxes still somewhere of their favorite athletes sort of tucked away so uh that was definitely a cool brand to work on and with ebay and stuff i'm sure they're they're probably worth a lot right you know you know i remember there was um uh, it, it was it was great to go back through the archives at General Mills and find, and there were boxes that they had from the early days where you're like, I can't believe we still have a copy of this. And then there were some where we didn't even in the archives have uh, have a version of you know uh, some of the greatest athletes that graced the boxes. Where there were some years that were like, wow, somehow those got handed out, and we don't even have a copy. So there there's certainly some out there, you know, that would be worth something today. So I have to tell you that I definitely am a drinker of Kill Cliff, and I wanted to ask, where did the name come from? Well, it's it's a funny story. Our founder, uh, Todd Ehrlich, was a Navy SEAL, and he there are a couple of stories. I mean, one, we always tell people if we're in the buying office, we talk about overcoming hurdles and overcoming obstacles and how you bonk or burn out or fall off a cliff in your workouts, and our products help you overcome that. So that's a that's a very nice uh, way to describe our, our name. But uh, really, the the story behind it has been so steeped in lore and speculation that we we don't generally talk about how our founder came up with it because we've had more speculation in the internet. Uh, if you go out and search it, people speculation is actually more fun than the real story. No, I think I think many times it is. So uh, I think it's a it's a great product. I wanted to change lanes for a minute. And ask sure. you, Joe, how do you personally define success? You know, I, I I personally define success as when you aim for a goal, if you set an objective and you start putting the time and effort into it and you don't deviate, you don't quit, and you get after it every day. You can fail on your uh, pursuit of that goal, but if you keep getting up and getting after it, that that, in my mind, is success. You know, that'll lead you to your objectives and your finished goal, but that determination and perseverance is what I define success by. That's a great definition. And if you could define your, if you had to define yourself in only one word, what would that word be? Ooh, boy, that's. Uh, I would say um, I'm an optimist. I think in our 150 or so recordings, that's the first time that that, wo that word's been used. So touche for you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's in large part because as I think about things like determination and grit and perseverance, I think at the heart of it, it requires a level of optimism, right? You you have to have a belief in yourself or your pursuit that it is worth that effort and that you are going to accomplish your goal. That's why, you know, I think I think of that as in the face of any sort of challenge or difficulties we've had, you know personally or in business life or in your career, that's at the heart of it. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think 
that's such a powerful word. It doesn't mean that you're obviously always going to be successful, but I think if you take an optimistic approach, you're, you have a much better chance of being successful than if you don't. Right. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's kind of a, you know, what gets you fired up, you know, what gets you motivated to get after it. And, uh, you know, I think if you, if you, you obviously, especially in my role, you have to think about what are the dark sides? What are the misses? What happens if we make a mistake? So I spent a lot of time, you know, contemplating scenarios where if things don't go our way, but uh, y- if, if you handle that with a, a sort of a woe is me or oh gosh, then, you know, you're not going to get out of bed in the morning. No, definitely not. So one of the things we're always looking to do is add value to our listeners. And I was curious if you have either a personal or a daily morning, excuse me, a personal morning or daily ritual that you swear by. You know, uh, I'm a big fan of, um, I kind of go through a similar routine, like uh, my routine in the morning of just uh, getting up, I start stretching, I work out in the morning, and that way I can attack my day. I know I've accomplished one thing that I set out to do right away in the morning. Uh, that that sets my mind right. It also gets me physically ready to pursue the day. And I think having that kind of routine, and not everybody's you know a morning workout person, but whatever your pursuit is, whether that's you know yoga and stretching, or whether that's literally throwing weights over your head, you know, setting the day up with that first. That's my routine, and I think that's what sets you up to be able to approach the rest of your day. No, it's important that you have your your daily or morning ritual, and I think, like you said, it doesn't mean the same thing for everybody, but you touched on something that, that I really thought was neat is you talked about having accomplishing something, and I think if you start your day off with accomplishing something, it just puts you in that frame of mind that you can go after it and get after your day, and I think it's important to have those small victories because what we talk about is those small victories lead to those huge wins down the road. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think if, if you've got that under your belt, you can be like, yeah, your mood is in the right place, right? Even if you know the next thing you're going to pursue is you got a huge meeting or huge pitch or whatever it is you need to accomplish uh, beyond that workout or that routine, you've got that one done. Now you're ready to take on the next role. So you're absolutely right, Chris. One of the topics we often discuss is personal development, and I was curious if there's something that you might have read recently that you'd like to recommend to our listeners. I, I read uh, the book Grit. Um, I am such a fan of that word, and it's it's a it's an interesting book when you start to look at what how you define grit, what determines uh, when somebody can dig deep and uh, find that moment of. I'm going to push through. And when we work, you know, I work with Navy SEALs on my team and I get to talk to them about their stories of getting through buds and training. That takes true grit. I mean, those those folks are amazing, right? What they have to go through. And uh, if you read that book, you get a sense of what it is. You'll have a good identification of, do I have those qualities? Do I have those traits? How do I de- develop them in myself? And uh, I think it's a definitely a worthwhile read when you're talking about self-development. What am I looking to do? Because, again, when we talk about perseverance, determination, I think that rolls up into the word grit. No, Angela Duckworth, I believe, wrote that. Yes. She, she did yeah. an amazing job. And, and I think it is really a, a neat word because it deals with sports and military and business and life. And I think a lot of people are defined. And I think it's a much more popular word today in 2018 than it was probably years ago. Right, right. I, I think... I think you're right. And I think in all the challenges that we face today, you know, it's going to give you good insight. You're going to realize that, you know, it's, it's up to you, right? It's up to the individual to say, you know, I've got this in me and I'm willing to put forth the next step. You know, there's, there's a, I I was trying to think of this saying uh, earlier this morning, there's um, a, what is it? A journey of a thousand steps always starts with one, you know, and, and I, I kind of love that idea that, you got to start somewhere and and to start knowing you've got that daunting path in front of you that's part of that grittiness that's part of that grit factor of like i know i got to start here i know there's going to be a lot more after it but i'm still going to start cuz i know i'm going to make it through no for such a for a four letter word it's such a powerful word that that means so much so one of the things we often talk about not only on our podcast but also on stage and throughout different things in our company is the word accountability and i was curious yeah. What does accountability mean to you? Following through on what you uh, commit to. You know, we pe- there are a lot of people that uh, have a difficult time finishing. And, you know, when you talk about accountability, there's an element of 
I'm going to see this through. I'm going to, even if I don't have to have the finished product, I know the point at which I'm going to hand it off to the next person. So making commitments and following through is so critical in life, in business, in your career, because people want to know they can count on you, right? You're going to get more opportunity if you continue to deliver and follow through on the things that you say you're going to do. No, I, I, I think your definition is, is spot on. And, and there's so much to that is, and you also said is a lot of people don't finish things. And I had a guest on a few weeks back and they said something interesting that so many people like to start things, but not many people actually finish them. <laughs> That's, it's a- absolutely true. I, down to the smallest thing, you know, I have a friend who likes to do a lot of house projects and yard projects and, you know, I won't call him out, but uh, he's one who's in sort of perpetual project mode. And, uh, and I, I have the opposite approach. I like to kind of, I, even in those small tasks, it's like, I need to finish. If I said, I'm going to do this and I've started it, I've taken that first step, I got to see it through. And, uh, you know, that, that feeds your sense of accomplishment and what you're able to do even on the small tasks. Right. But if you, if you make a commitment to something, you got to see it through. No, it's so important. It's, it's not just saying you're going to do it. It's, it, that's the important part, but the most important part is going ahead and finishing it. Absolutely. hundred percent. So assuming the 20 year old version of yourself would have listened, what would have been the one piece of advice you would have liked to have given the 20 year old Joe? You know, uh, I, I think, um, continue to reach and strive. Like don't, don't set up a framework in your own mind of, of any limitation at all. If there's something that you want to do or pursue, get going now, right? Get going after it and, uh, don't let anything stand in your way. You know, there's, I, I feel like I've taken that approach, but that uh, 20-year-old kid who is sort of floating around going, I'm not sure uh, I know what I'm going to do with my life or my future, um, those, are the, those are the things that I would point to. And, and sort of recognizing you don't have to have it all figured out when you're starting out. But if you've got some dreams, start putting this first step in place. Make your step and take the second one and keep going. And if, and if things deviate along the way, that's okay. You can be flexible. But uh, don't set up any limitations in your mindset as you pursue your dreams. No, I love it. It's, t- it's kind of back to the quote you said, a journey of a thousand steps start with one. So take that first one and then the second one. And, and it goes back to what we touched on before is all those small victories leads to huge wins down the road. Huge wins. And, you know, there's, there's a, you know that, that part of paying your dues and putting the, in the work, you know, the, that's, that's some rich stuff. You know, that's character building, that's learning that happens. You know, when you when you stumble and fall and scuff up your knee or or, or whatever the, the challenge is that you had to overcome, you've learned. You've either learned how you approach things or how what the what the right path through is. Um, I just I think there's so much that uh, that falls to the wayside when we get, you know, younger folks today say, Hey, you know, I've I've put in my three or four months, I'm ready for the C suite or I'm ready to, you know, own this. It's like, hey, you know, you got to, there's some more learning between here and there. No, I think a lot of times in today's day and age with technology, it's the mentality of fast forwarding some of the, some of the, as you mentioned, the gritty work. So I think it's important that you do have to pay your dues. And it doesn't mean for some people it doesn't happen quicker than others, but the real, sure. reality is you still have to put in that time. That's right. That's right. You, you do. And, and I think it's okay to reach and try to push to make things faster. I just, uh, you know, you got you to think about those steps between here and there. You know, it's not going to be easy. The people who get there faster, they put, they did, they put in the work. Yeah, and, they, and, the, and the, those people that do get there faster, they, they probably put a lot of work that nobody sees too, with different hours and things behind the scenes. No question. There's always that, there's always that work behind it, you know, the, the gritty, dirty, sort of uh, uh, unglamorous work that you had to do behind the scenes to get there. And, and, you know, that's not the part anybody wants to talk about. No, it's always the victories and the escalades and the accomplishments everybody wants to see. Exactly, exactly. So here's an interesting question for you. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I would say uh, the, the easy one, uh, uh, because of how I started, probably my dad. It'd be fun to catch him up on uh, the last uh, 20 years. Um but uh, but I'll but I'll go with uh, something that uh, other folks would know. Um, you know, it was a recent. I was just watching the documentary, so it's top of mind. And I was thinking of Robin Williams. And the and the the reason is, uh, you know, his his humor, his excitement, his joy, and sort of uh, his optimism. At least up until obviously when he was 
suffering from his illness um, was really contagious and was really fascinating to me. And I think uh, obviously it would be a high energy, entertaining dinner. And uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun. No, that would be an awesome dinner. So I have to ask you, what is your favorite Robin Williams movie? <sighs> Boy, um, you know, I w- Good Morning Vietnam, probably. I, I, I think uh, I think he was uh, that 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 movie was like him. Like the whole movie was him, and I, I had such a blast watching that. That's a great movie, and my actual favorite, all-time favorite Robin Williams movie is, it's actually not a comedy, but it's Goodwill Hunting. I thought he just, he just showed an amazing side to him, but he also threw in some of those really funny lines with him and Matt Damon that I just couldn't help but crack up. Right? He was, he, his range was exceptional. Exceptional range. And like, you're right, when he came out with more of a dramatic role, it was like mind-blowing. So, very cool. So you have some exciting news with an energy line. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind telling our listeners a little bit about. Yeah, well, we're, you know, we make performance drinks. So we've historically for seven years been in the recovery business where we make a recovery drink that's lightly carbonated, low calorie, no sugar, and a phenomenal product. And this year we've expanded into two platforms. We added an endurance line called our uh, Killcliff Endure. And then we launched Killcliff Ignite on July 1st, and it's a pre-workout energy blend, 150 milligrams of clean caffeine. We also added a good source of magnesium and a good source of potassium, so it'll help you hydrate before your workout, but also definitely give you a boost to get after. Only 25 calories per can and zero sugar, so we're very proud of uh, our clean ingredients, and we're super excited about this new line expansion, and you know, even in the first month, the uh, the market seems to be pretty excited that we're uh, bringing it. No, it's awesome, and I think the the key part is is the sugar being low and the calories. Because I think, me personally, being a, a workout freak myself, I know there's a lot of great tasting drinks out there, but unfortunately, they they don't do a lot of good for you. They taste great, but they're full of sugar and carbs and calories. So I think it kind of defeats the purpose. So the fact that you guys are taking this head on, I think, is really interesting. But it's also a great addition to your ready successful line. For sure. You know, what's disappointing when you're going to put in all that work and effort, you know, mainstream sports drinks, you might as well go buy Kool-Aid. And, and, and that's the unfortunate reality. And for 40 years, you know, nobody knew any better. There weren't any other options. And now we're out there with stuff that's better for you, has better ingredients, is clean, doesn't have artificial colors or flavors. So when you're putting in the work, we're there to help you out. We're going to help get you up, get you through and help you recover faster without adding any junk. No, and like I said, I'm a, a workout freak myself, so I definitely will uh, will check those out. So before we let you go, Joe, I wanted to ask if you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. No, I, I, I love your podcast. I think it's got a great message. You know, we've been out there with our campaign, Kill the Quit. So anytime that uh, people are looking for inspiration, you know, we, we continue to help uh, athletes as we go forward. And I think the idea of how do I kill the quit? How do I get up and get after it every day? find that grit, find that perseverance and pursue. That's what's going to drive success. So I'm just, I think your message is spot on. Uh, I appreciate getting the opportunity to be here to talk to you today. No, I appreciate it. And last question is what's the best way for our listeners to connect and follow you as well as your company? Yeah. If they uh, uh, find us at uh, killthequit.com and you can find us on Instagram at killcliff, uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. I'm on Instagram at uh, Joe C. Driscoll. You can find me there. Awesome. Well, listen, Joe, I truly appreciate you shared some some great stuff with us today. I'm, I'm excited about your new product, but more importantly, I think the whole idea of grit and the whole Navy SEAL mentality fits spot on, and our tribe will definitely, uh, definitely listen. So I appreciate it, and I wish you continued success, and hopefully we can speak again soon. That'd be great. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for listening to episode number 142. Joe Driscoll is quite an interesting gentleman with a very successful background. Today, as the CEO of Killcliffe, he is helping take that company to the next level. Joe shared a tough story with us when his father fought and eventually lost his battle to Lou Gehrig's disease. And it was at that moment that Joe decided that in life, there was no time to waste and just how precious it was. I love Joe's definition of success, which is when you aim for a goal or an objective, You get after it every single day. Not a typical response, but something I think we all should do and something we all can do every single day. Joe mentioned the word grit many times throughout today's interview, and I happen to love that word. In his parting words, Joe shared with us the importance of getting up and getting after it 
every single day. So my call to action today is very simple. Do you get up and get after it every single day? Do you wake up with a specific goal, a mission, and your objective to achieve? If you don't, I recommend that you take a look in that self-accountability mirror and you get after it as you go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.